Smite Talk is proudly sponsored by SmiteShop.com. Go to SmiteShop.com to support your favorite gods and goddesses by purchasing and rocking a Smite t-shirt. 50% of all sales proceeds go to Child's Play Charity. Check out SmiteShop.com today. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Smite Talk. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 18 of Smite Talk. My name is Octane Pro, and today I'm joined by Duke, content creator, streamer, previous high-res Smite community manager. Duke, how's it going, man? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So it was a pleasure to have Duke on the show. Um, and, uh, you know, Duke and I have uh, become close over the past, you know, two years or so, communicating back and forth just with a lot of the community involvement I've had in the scene. And so it was great to finally have him uh, on the show as we've had so many other guests. I felt it was perfectly appropriate to have him on the show, uh, especially because recently we've had a lot of content creators uh, and streamers as well. Um, so before we jump into kind of the nitty gritty, uh, I want to go ahead and just tell you guys, you know, what is Smite Talk? For those of you guys that haven't checked out Smite Talk, Smite Talk's about a 45 minute to an hour show that goes and talks about different topics within the community. But what sets Smite Talk apart from other shows out there is that you guys get to call in and give your feedback. So directly below my video is a, um, a, a instructions on how to go ahead and call in. So you can go download Raid Call. And then you type in the group ID, which is kind of like your channel or chat room. And it goes ahead and brings you into Raid Call. And it will put you directly into the lounge. And then I will send you a message uh, via chat. There's a chat feature within Raid Call. Just to make sure you're there. Make sure you're ready. Make sure everything's good. And then we'll go ahead and bring you in. And, and you can ask a question to Duke. You can ask a question to me. Um, you can comment on something we're talking about. Um, you know, as long as we're related to Smite in one way or another, you know, it's perfect. Uh, and anything goes at this point, folks. Um, so once again, check out the Raid Call information directly below. Now, if you don't have the opportunity to use Raid Call, you can't use voice chat, you're, 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 you're in a situation where you can't go ahead and go live you know, with something like that, with people in the room or whatever, uh, I will go ahead and post a chat in uh, uh, I'm sorry, I will post a link in chat with you guys can go ahead and use it. It's ask.fm slash octane pro. And just ask anything you want, uh, as I said before, about Smite in one way or another to myself or to Duke. Um, and we would definitely answer it as we go through the show. So go ahead, ask anything, folks. I'll put the link directly into chat. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and kind of jump into it. Uh, what I like to do, Duke, is kind of start out the beginning of the show to kind of help the community get to know you. Um, so we'll go ahead and ask a few questions okay. and kind of jump into it. So first off, what's the story behind the handle of duke uh well my name is actually brandon dukes for those who didn't know that already um and when i started high res um i i became high res duke because i didn't want to be high res brandon okay um i don't know i, I don't know why <laughs> it, it just I, I i wanted to be slightly more anonymous okay. than than that and so i took my last name you know took the x s off of it and went from there and so after I left high res recently, I wanted to still be recognizable to people around, mm -hmm. you know, the high res communities because I still want to be involved yeah. in one way or another. So, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much where the name comes from. Now, was there a gamer handle you used time and time again growing up outside of Duke? Uh, Kath, C-A-T-H, Kath. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It, uh, it was based on my first character in City of Heroes, which was really my my first foray into the, the online gaming world. So. Ah, very cool, very cool. So yep. growing up, what video games did you play, and was there a certain genre that caught your eye? Uh, really? Now, if you want to go way back, I'm probably, you know, older than maybe twice <laughs> the age of a lot of people in the, in the Smite community. So growing up, you know, the NES shipped in the U.S., during my childhood. Okay. So yes, I am older than a lot of you watching this. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it, um, I started out on, you know, platformers. So, I mean, yeah, Super Mario Brothers, um, a game that I've been playing 
religiously over the okay. past several days since it released is Strider, which was a Ooh. you know puzzle um, action platformer game. Okay. And they just put on a new version of it. Um, Double Helix just put on a new version of it here recently, which I shouldn't talk about that on this channel. So, no, yeah. no, it's okay. But it's okay. It's, it's, it's a fun game. <laughs> so, so that's that's kind of what I grew up on. Um, okay. A lot of platformers. I was never really a speedrunner or anything like that, but. Okay. Um, when I got into online games, I started, um, at a, probably a weird place for a lot of people. Like I said before, I started with city of heroes. Okay. Um, cause I was a big superhero fan, um, grew up on comic books and stuff like that. Okay. So, so yeah, I, I kind of stuck with MMOs initially. Um, then I rolled into, uh, I, that was pretty much my game of choice and I would play right. a few games here and there. Um, but like most MMOs, you know, you, if if you're really into it, you're really into oh, yeah. that that game, you know. Yeah. So uh, never really tried out um, any of the other MMOs. Okay. Um, obviously, it's gone now. Um, it it was it was shut down. Uh, uh, I guess a little over a year ago now, um, or I don't know, somewhere around that time frame. Um, but I I find myself gravitating back toward what I played when mm-hmm. I was a kid. Uh, a lot of platformer games. Um, when people see me, like when I stream late night and I'm not streaming Smite, um, I'm streaming games that are, you know, in that genre. So platformers and, um, you know, sort of side scrolling type, type games. So I, I don't know why, but I, I just really enjoy that, that type of gameplay. So, okay. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you've played quite a, quite a, quite a decent amount of a, a variety, uh, you know, a little bit of variety, but you've also kind of stuck to your roots as you talked about with, with some of the stuff yeah. that you really, really like there that you've kind of been drawn mm-hmm. to. Um, so, so jumping from your childhood and then kind of a little bit more recent, um, uh, you know, as we talked about there, you did work for high res studios for some time. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you originally get introduced to high res? Like, like, did you, did you find an application online and you filled it out or did somebody, you know, work there? How did that come about originally for you? All right. So this is actually sort of a dream come, come true type okay. of story. I, I like guess, it. For a gamer. I like it. So, okay. so I was, like I said, I was playing city of heroes. Um, a guy that I, I, teamed with a lot in that game told me hey there's a game studio like just up the road from you okay he said aren't you aren't you still in the atlanta area i said Mm -hmm. yeah he said there's a game studio near you and they're making this you know cool mmo shooter Mm. game global global agenda okay hmm okay so the day before global agenda i wasn't involved in beta alpha beta anything um the day before global agenda launch I got a lot of my buddies from City of Heroes on board okay. with hopping into Global Agenda on launch day. Okay. Um, so we we all played Global Agenda, and we all jumped into the, um, or I, I I really got involved in the forums, and I you know I was a forumite in City of Heroes, so um, I got really 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 involved in the forums at Global Agenda. Okay. Um, just started paying attention a lot to things that were said by the devs, things that were said by the players and trying to find a way to connect the dots with that when I could for people, you know, people would say, well, well, you guys never said anything about this. And, you know, on the forum, like players would say that on the forum and I'd say, well, yeah, yeah, they did. It's right here. And I'd link them. Okay. Okay. Cool. And so, so sort of, sort of becoming a, I guess, this is a word I, I use for some other people in the community, community liaison. Yeah, I like point. it. I think that makes sense. And, yeah. And um, not not really named, you know, that's that's a that's a self-titled position, I suppose. Um, but <laughs> I kept bugging. I kept bugging Stu to okay. uh, to, you know, come in and maybe just, you know, sort of gather things from the forums to sure. to to provide, you know, some more insight. So, you know, just in case they're they're missing things or whatever, which they're, they were, they were paying attention to it more than I thought they were. Sure. Um, but anyway, I, I just kind of kept, you know, sending him stuff. Um, when, when crazy things would happen in global agenda, I'd kind of be there to, to be the guy that says, wow, that's, um, that's kind of a weird decision. Why would you do it this way? And sure. then, you know, sure. we talked a little bit or whatever. Anyway. So, Basically, I was a gamer who got really involved in the community and tried to contribute as much as I could and connect the devs and the players okay. as much as I could as a player for about six months. Okay. Um, uh, and 
then Stu said, hey, uh, Maria is going to be giving you a call okay. to set up a time for you to come in and talk to us. Great. And so I came in and talked to him and started out part-time in support okay. doing customer service type stuff. But I was I was on the forums pretty much day one. Okay. Um, and then slowly moved into, you know, more – more community management type stuff. So managing forums, uh, connecting people sure. um, through social media and stuff like that. So that's pretty yeah. So that's my story. Yeah, long story. Sorry. That's pretty cool. As you said, it's kind of like one of your dream come true type of things, where like you were involved yep. with the community and you were putting in the time and the effort into the community, and you were you kind of were that as you said, community liaison type of community manager type of individual, and so it kind of just rolled into it. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so. That was how long ago? How many years ago? Little over three years okay. ago. Okay. Okay. Uh, you would have about three and a half years ago, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you came mm -hmm. on there, and as you talked about, you came on directly in like the support type of role, but you were mm -hmm. you were also dealing a lot with the forums, just because you were kind of brought over that 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 hobby that you had now into high res, and you were yeah. also working there. So then you were in there as support then walk us through kind of over the years how you all of a sudden smite came along and how you rolled into a community manager type of position well um i was kind of the only guy doing community management to okay. like it within the within the confines of what you would consider community management sure, sure yeah. um what people see on a public on the public side of that um i was kind of the only guy that was was on the forums that much and you know I was even told, well, man, you you sure spend a lot of time on the forums <laughs> more more than more than a handful of times. Yep. Um, but I mean, I just, just wanted to see what was going on. So um, transitioning to Smite, so Global Agenda, you know, did what it did. It kind of mm -hmm. kind of petered petered out. It's still around, but you know, it it's still around. Yeah. Um, then Tribes came along, and. I came to Global Agenda for the MMO aspect of it, okay. which it I, I ended up enjoying the shooter aspect of it more because <laughs> the, there wasn't a, there wasn't a high level of MMO content, which sure. I mean the studio even even realized that shortly after launch and tried to to make some changes to accommodate that. But um, so even though I kind of moved toward a shooter fan, I was never, I couldn't really get as hardcore as tribes. Okay. So tribes came along and I, I felt like I was kind of treading water because I'm like, man, I don't really know how to relate to these guys. Yeah, I can and see that. So, so uh, I'm going to use another water analogy. I kind of just carried water uh, during okay. tribes because it, it's just like, well, this is what we need to tell people. This is what we need to do. And so I, I kind of became really task oriented because I couldn't relate to the guys a lot. Yeah. I tried, um, but you know, I wasn't a I wasn't a hardcore shooter player sure. or fan really. Yeah. And so, um, so it was difficult for me to really transition into, hey, I'm gonna be the guy for these guys. And so, um, so I kind of just you know, so, took more of a I guess liaison role there. Yeah. Well, then then we started talking about Smite mm -hmm. and um, really the the surge in streaming smite and and when you know letting letting people letting players stream it so early on and not worrying about ndas and stuff like that yeah um really opened up an opportunity for me to get more involved in the community again because i could you know i could hang out on twitch for you know two to three hours a day see who's streaming smite sure and and establish a relationship with them you know yeah. i i you know Typically, the way I started a relationship was I, I dropped some gem codes in chat or whatever, and it freaked <laughs> people out. They're like, "What's going on?" You know? Yeah. And um, probably, probably fifty percent of people were like, "Wow, that's awesome!" And the other fifty percent were like, "Is this really happening?" You know, yeah, people. Right? Did, you know, it, people were confused by anyone in a company coming around and actually interacting with people like sure. that. And obviously, high res is, has taken that to oh, yeah. you know beyond just just that you know initial initial level that that I was at. So um, so yeah, that that gave me an opportunity. Even though I I wasn't necessarily you know I, I'm a streamer now, but yeah. I wasn't necessarily really into streaming at the time. It gave me a way to actually talk to people one on one, like I like to do. And then still do the the broad based things with social media and you know 
forums when we had them and Reddit and stuff like that. So sweet, sweet. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the, the long answer, but I think you really needed to you, need, you needed to because there's a lot of detail there. Yeah, I kind of had to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. So, um, so okay. At this point in time, you're the you, you know you're the community manager um, in regards to the part of our story we're talking about here, just getting to know you a little bit more. And and so while you were at high res, um, mm -hmm. you know what um, uh, that last position there you talked about, community manager. What was all entailed there? Like if somebody was to say, okay, what did you do for high? Mm -hmm. You know, explain what the community manager did. What would that be? Um, I mean, it's mainly paying attention to what's going on in the community. So you kind of have to bounce around to um, different social media types. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously when there's forums, you have to pay attention to what's yep. going on in the forums. Yep. Um, you have to keep uh, that, that. There's some there's some fun things with that. And with an, with an independent developer like, like hi res mm -hmm. is, um, that is a little different than some of the larger companies for better or worse. Okay. Um, with the larger companies, uh, there, there's sort of a, a filtering funneling system, I guess yes. you could say, um, with marketing and, uh, community management, not quite as much with, um, uh, with a company like high res sure, because sure. you know, you have the CEO sitting in streams with people, you yes. know, so yeah. <laughs> not exactly, if, if he, not exactly the most traditional. <laughs> right. So if he feels like something is, it needs to be said, he's just going to say it. Correct. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. So sometimes, sometimes that was a scary world to live in because uh, you know, things that we didn't necessarily, not things that, that we, the collective didn't yeah, want sure, sure. to go out. But, but we, there, there are things that sometimes, you know, I, or, you know, people in PR or marketing sure, or whatever sure. would, would, would like to kind of fashion more of a message around things before they go out, but they just kind of go out. So, so you kind of have to roll with the punches and stuff like that. So, um, pay attention to social media. Uh, uh, oh, the reason why I was bringing that up, sorry, I, I kind of bunny trailed, but there was a reason for that. So. There's paying attention to what the community is saying. Then there's also paying attention to we're an independent company where our CEO likes to tell everybody what's going on. <laughs> yep. Before before we're necessarily ready sometimes. So <laughs> so sometimes you you kind of had to roll with that. And uh, you know, Ares likes to have fun, and he sure. likes to he likes to be the guy that knows the things because I mean he owns the company, so he knows the things. Just so, a little bit. Um. So so yeah, it's uh it, it's always fun. You, you're kind of paying attention to what you know, ex exter external sources are saying, yeah. you're paying yeah. attention to what internal sources are saying and just trying to find a place where you can, uh, you can sort of match up people's expectations and, and, you know, explain things where people feel like they're not explained and stuff like that. So a day in the life of a community manager at a company like hi res sure, is, sure. um, you know, checking all your social media stuff, okay. everything from, in from private messages to, you know, public posts to direct posts. So, you know, Facebook, Twitter, um, Reddit, yep. uh, YouTube. Um, sure. So it's checking all that social media, seeing what people are saying and seeing the, the highest or, or the, the comments and discussions that have the highest value um, are trying to determine the, the conversations that have the highest value to pass along to someone. And okay. when I say the highest value, it's not like a, you know, it scored really big on Reddit. It's, <laughs> it's, is this something, number one, is this something that's being discussed constructively? Mm -hmm. People, community people, and I'm, 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 I'm just as guilty of it, you know, on the outside with other gaming companies and even with high res sometimes sure, now that, sure. you know, I'm, I'm not there anymore. Um, the, uh, the the value of constructive criticism <laughs> is so high and it's very difficult for someone in community management to point a developer to to uh you know a thread on sure. reddit or sure. a comment on youtube whatever you know where, wherever wherever this exists on the interwebs it's very very hard to point um, a productive person to it who already has a lot on their plate mm -hmm. and is staring, you know, down the barrel of, of the deadline gun and stuff like that. Sure. It's very difficult to send them to something where they're, you know, they're being insulted, their families are being insulted yeah. and their work is being insulted because they're spending, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90 hours a week sure. 
to to try to create content that entertains you as the player as mm -hmm. the community member and so it's very difficult to send them to something that you know says awful things about them yeah that's true um, and try and try to get through that so anyway so back to the whole value thing you know it's constructively presented so that it it's actually worth their time to read yeah and then it's actually talking about something that you know is more on the um objective side instead of subjective side. sure it's, i can see that yep. it's not so much it's not so much man this feels really bad to me and then you have 18 different opinions throughout the discussion where well it doesn't feel that bad to me well it kind of feels bad to me but blah 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 you know so you get you can get a lot out of those discussions but you get a lot more out of hey this is how this looks to everyone yeah based on not based on feelings but based on what is actually there and so um constructive and as objective as possible the more you can send that to the devs the better so mm -hmm. anyway so that's the that's the what you do internally okay side okay. And then what you do externally is, you know, just establish relationships with people, you know, like you, sure, um, sure. you know, like you and I talked a lot, um, you know, we'll, we'll argue about stuff, you know, because <laughs> we have a good enough relationship yes. that we can argue yep. about stuff. Right. Yep. And so it's, um, you know, I was just talking to someone earlier when I was getting everything set up sure. for this and I was, I was totally harshing on him because I could. Yeah, sure. You know, and, and I mean, I wasn't being mean, but I was yeah. just like being really straight about things sure. instead of being flowery and nice about it. Yep. yep. But, uh, you know, it, you can't have those kind of relationships. I mean, you can only have so many relationships like that in your life. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the internet obviously makes it easier to have more of those because you sure. can have them in tiny little bits, you know, of yeah. 140 characters or less or <laughs> something like that. So, yes, that's so yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's what you do externally as a community manager is you find places where you can establish a relationship with someone, whether they're a big dog or someone that's just getting started and say, Hey, why don't you, you know, kind of help people collaborate and stuff like that. Sure. Um, because everyone wants to be a lone wolf and wants to yep. be a singular success, but the internet is getting, it's big, but it's becoming such a small community because mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's this weird <laughs> esoteric <laughs> conversation, I guess, yep. but yeah. um, it's becoming this, this community where you've got the big guys and then it, it's kind of up to everyone else to, to sort of collaborate because even the big guys collaborate. Sure. So, yeah. um, so yeah, that, that's what I tried to do as a community manager. Okay. I, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to try to make people superstars, but I wanted to also point them in the direction of other people who could possibly, who, who could not only benefit from what they do, but you know, the, the person I'm referring could, could also benefit, you know, the yeah. mutual, um, yeah, mutual benefit. That's okay. Right. Okay. That's what I was always trying to point people towards. So that's what I did as a community manager. So. Which is quite interesting because, um, you know, some people will, it's interesting. You talked especially about like high res studios and um, it being independent versus like looking at other companies. Like a lot of people compare a lot of community managers to like a Blizzard type of community managers. Blizzard is a very, very well-known publishing company and their community members are community managers are very different than like what we saw, like what you just explained there. Um, in mm -hmm. regards to the way that, and the only reason I say that is it, it, with sheer size. And just like you talked about with the way yeah. that things kind of filter down through, whereas at high res studios, now granted, we're very thankful. High res studios is a very transparent company. We find that individuals wear several different hats. And we found that with, with, mm -hmm. with, with learning mm -hmm. with high res Kelly and how her role has developed there. And what we learned last week when we brought her on smite talk and, and same thing with Bart and, and then APC as well. All people we've had mm -hmm. on the show where, where their role is not necessarily like all you do is community management. You don't touch anything else. And you have yep. five different community managers, you know, high res isn't necessarily like that. And uh, so it has its pros and its cons, but uh, it, it was, um, kind of like what you talked about with collaborating with community members. I think that's one of the cooler things I think about your job is you being able to reach out to other individuals in unique manners um, mm -hmm. without a doubt there. So moving ahead, uh, you worked for high res studios, you're a community manager. How long were you community manager for, for it with smite two years, a year. Do you remember? I mean, since it, since it's been, <laughs> in okay. So, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so since, you know, since it started through January 31st. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. So, so moving ahead here, um, a few weeks back, you, you decided to, it was best in your best interest, I guess, to, to leave high res studios and, and people in chat. Oh, hi, you know, Duke works for high res. Some people, Oh, Duke got fired from high res. So to clear the air, what, what, what would all happen there so that everybody's on the same page? Uh, so what happened was um, Todd found out I was campaigning for Kevin Sorbo <laughs> and Liam Hemsworth okay. for president. No, not really. Um, uh, <laughs> no, I, I just I, I have some things I have to take care of with okay. my family and I have some educational things I have to take care of. Okay. So I, I just stepped down and okay. um, I, uh, I I mean, there was, there was no bad like. It surprised Todd. Um, he's like, wow, that was, that's a lot. And, sure. and it really surprised him because we were doing the stuff with Minion has spawned where mm -hmm. it's like, I'm his mortal enemy or whatever. Ah. Um, and he's just like, you know, I, I, it was never, he never said it, but I, I still wonder if in the back of his mind, he was thinking, man, did he take that really personally? And no, I didn't, <laughs> you know, I mean, this is something my wife and I had been discussing for a couple of months. Okay. And, um, so, so yeah, I, I mean, it's just, there, there were things I needed to take care of sure. at home and things I needed to take care of with my education okay. that I wasn't, I wasn't, I shouldn't say I wasn't allowed mm -hmm. the proper time, yeah, yeah. but I, I, um, just, I don't know. I, I, I would spend as, I would spend as much time as I needed to on things sometimes sure, sure. with high res. And that would get in the way of things that I needed to do personally. Oh, yeah. And like yeah. I said, for my family and for education. So it was, uh, you know, I, I am not the best manager of my time. <laughs> and so I, I basically put myself in a position where I have to manage my time properly. Okay. And so, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was solely my decision. And, um, I mean, if you asked Todd, he would tell you that. So <laughs> I mean, he, he was looking, I mean, I can't tell you things he was, he was looking to do obviously because sure. of internal communication, sure. but I mean, there were things that we were looking to do mm -hmm. that would have, um, you know, given me years and years and years of things to sure. do at higher ass. Sure. Um, but yeah, I just, it, just right now, I mean, e even if it's like we're on a break or something like that, I, I just, yeah, I had to, I had to resign for, for the time being. So. Okay, sure. No, it makes yeah. complete sense there. So um, now that you're not uh, with high res Studio and, and on their staff there, um, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like you dropped off the planet and you're done with Smite, you're done with gaming, you're, you're not involved in that at all. You're actually still doing some very much community-based things. And so what type of stuff can, uh, are you doing now and what can people expect from you moving forward as there's kind of this like void here and people are like, well, what what's going on? So, so can you explain that a little bit for us? Yeah, so I stream um smite pretty much every weekday i mean i had had some weird days last week sure. but um, um but since so i left friday the 31st so february 3rd i started streaming and i stream smite from 12 to 3 noon to 3 okay. eastern time every every weekday and then also do some random streaming at night so sure. um smite during the day and you know, I may move that time slot around here and there, um, but but right now it's twelve to three, um, and occasionally I go long. Typically, I go long because okay. you know, just like <laughs> just like all my answers to these questions, yes, it's all you know, good. I, I just keep talking. So, so yeah, um, so yeah, so that's my normal time slot, and then at night. I'll stream a lot of the games, you know, that I told you I, I've kind of been going back to the, the sure. side scrolling, you know, platformer genre. So I've yeah. been streaming, um, you know, the game Strider recently and, you know, I'll probably do some like a DuckTale speed run or something oh, okay, like that, cool. which, which for me isn't that fast. <laughs> uh, it's just fast enough to, yeah. you know, get fast enough to get an achievement is typically what I'm shooting for. I'm not trying to be the best in the world. I'm just trying to hundred percent a game. So, yeah, yeah. um, cause I love achievements. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, that's what I do. I, I stream smite during the day, okay. my time, which it's daytime, it's daytime for me, but it's nighttime for, for Europe. So, um, I have a, I have a lot of, uh, European guys that come around the, the, uh, the channel, um, like Blanco, DJ V Blanco, he hangs around the, the chat a lot and likes to troll my games. Okay. Um, 
uh, and you know, several other people that people have probably seen around the community, sure, sure. Um, but maybe they don't see as much during like us prime time just because they're EU folks. Sure. So, so anyway, um, yeah, that's what I do stream during the day and do some random stuff at night. Sometimes smite, um, a lot of times it's other games, you know, like, um, side scroller platformer sure. type. So, yep. Okay. Very cool. And that's actually one, one of the mods posted uh, Duke's channel in chat there. So make sure you guys go over and support him. Click that follow button. That would be yep. greatly appreciated. Um, mm -hmm. So, so moving more out of the okay, let's learn a little. You know, let's learn about uh, Duke and his past and what he did for high res. Um, yep. There's, there's, and you, you talked a lot about you know watching streamers and stuff like that. Um, there's a number, a number of streamers out there in the community, and which ones are do you find yourself getting pulled towards watching time and time again? Uh, I mean, everybody has has their has their favorites. I mean, my guilty pleasure is watching Dan Brendan. Um, you know. So I guess what what is your guilty pleasure within the Smite community that's, at least? That's a very very guilty pleasure. <laughs> I know. Trust me. I, I've told I've told this on stream before. I used to dislike Brandon so much, so much, uh, and for some reason that completely turned around. And now I do. I, I think I've, I find myself watching him the most though, is just because of how 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 well he knows the game and so i find myself yeah. just being pulled into that like knowledge like wow like mm. I'm, a, I'm a community content creator and so i i have a personality and i enjoy doing this but like and i love smite but like i don't know the nitty-gritty that he does so i think that's why yep. I, get, I get pulled into that so what about you yep. who who is a streamer or streamers that you within the smite community that you find yourself watching if they're on you're like oh wow i gotta i gotta catch it um, I mean, I, a lot of the guys I had on, on lightning round when I was at high res, uh, <laughs> so, you know, you could probably just go through that list and okay. that's who it is, you know, it's, okay. uh, it's gank first gaming with smitten and soapbox. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's lost scarf. You know, th there's the people that, these are people that I establish relationships with. Sure. And so, um, sorry, there was fuzz flying in front of the camera. <laughs> it was bothering me. Um, but, uh, I, I wasn't, you know, I don't have a tick, um, <laughs> necessarily. So, uh, so GFG, okay. Lost Scarf, you, Squiddish, mm -hmm. um, you know, guys that are pretty popular around the community, Trend okay. Kill. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, and you know, I, I'll, I'll drop by, drop Dry Bear's stream okay. late night sometimes sure. too. So, so yeah, um, pretty much all the guys that, uh, that I ever covered who stream, mm -hmm. um, that that's typically who I hang around with, um, or I hang out in their chat. Hans, um, he's a big, uh, he he was really 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 popular, Smite streamer before people knew what Smite was. Okay. So basically, okay. as soon as we allowed people to stream, he was streaming with a couple other guys that people would know, Cadbury and Sooner. Okay. I mean they they have Twitch emotes, so they're mm -hmm. they're they're pretty they're pretty <laughs> successful streamers in their own right and yeah. so they uh they like streaming smite at the time and so you know i'll i'll still check them out whether they're streaming smite or or other random stuff so yeah. um so yeah uh, but around the smite community it's um it's the folks i mentioned you know if you if you go to the smite channel on youtube and go to the lightning round playlist mm -hmm. then those people okay, <laughs> pretty okay. much sure so, that's so, a yeah. valid question um, so yeah. moving on from there, you know, let's talk a little bit more about Smite. Um, what what god uh, or is it a god type um, that you really enjoy playing in Smite? Um, I'm a support player, and if anyone's watching ever watches my stream, mm -hmm. I mean, I I'm I'm a support player. Okay. I am not like your. I'm just not like your go getter killer guy. Sure, sure. Um, so, so I don't really play carry as much. Um, sometimes when I play them, I really enjoy them because I'm like, wow, look at all this damage. Yeah, right. I know you're not um, used to that as a support I, because, because I'm not accustomed <laughs> to doing damage to anything, you know. Yep. And so, or or really trying to do damage. I'm sure, just sure. you know trying to lock people in or whatever. So, um, so yeah, support players. So um, I've played a lot of Athena recently. Um, I enjoy, I. I really enjoy Ra and playing mm -hmm. him as a, as a support. I, I'm sure most people play him as sure. um, mid or solo lane, yeah, but yeah. I enjoy playing him as support. Um, Shunga, I've played her a little bit recently. Um, so, yeah, Geb is a pretty hilarious support. Um, <laughs> and I played him the other day. He has a, There's an interesting trick that I saw someone do in Arena, and I tried it for my last match of the week. Um, okay. Friday and it, it was it's pretty hilarious it, it really it really really screws with enemy teams <laughs> so so uh so yeah he's uh 
he's pretty fun to play. Um, so basically, I mean, if they're if they're in a guardian role, I, I'm probably I'm probably playing them at some point or another. Okay. And I'm playing them. I'm playing them to support, not to you know get kills or whatever. Okay. Sure. Sure. You and I, yeah. you and I get along well even more because that's that's what I like to play. I like to play support guardian 100. percent Yeah, but we can never play together. I know, right? Yo, <laughs> don't you go. That's right. Jump in game. I gotta spam it right away. Support, tool lane. Ymir's yeah. mine. Don't touch him. And that type of deal. Yeah. yeah, I completely understand there. Um, so I'll take one more one more question here. Um, of, and then we'll go ahead and uh, take a call here. Uh, we have yep. Requiem kind of hanging out, waiting here. And uh, the question, oh, yeah. the question is, there have been several new mechanics added to Smite over the last two years that have reshaped the game. Which one do you feel is mm -hmm. most significant? Ooh, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, it well, and it's a really tough question because I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not like I, I enjoy yep. seeing tournaments and I enjoy what's mm -hmm. going on with esports and Smite, but I'm not the guy that pays attention. You know, I'm not Dan Brandon <laughs> who pays attention to every sure. detail of everything. Sure. Um, but let's see what. So a, a mechanic. Yep. That's been added. That so basically something that kind of distinguishes Smite. Or uh, so, no, uh, my, uh, let me reshape that. There's something within Smite yeah. that that you feel. Uh, so, for example, the other day, like Gauntlet of Thieves was put in the game, and it like completely right, right, right. broke things to the point where it's like, okay, we got to pull it out. Well, let's go ahead yeah. and look at things throughout, and, and just quick examples are uh, gods that can ultimate up into the sky, um, yeah, gods that yeah, can yeah, affect yeah, okay. globally, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I, I guess I'm, I'm coming at this as a support player. Sure, please. I honestly think, um, I honestly think taunt. Okay. Which I mean, Athena is the only person who has Correct. A, a significant version of it, right? Um, she may be the only person who technically has yes. something that's called a taunt, mm -hmm. even though some other things could kind of be, could almost be classified as that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, because fear is basically a reverse taunt. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Anyway, yep. so um, I feel like I feel like that has, I, and you see it in tournaments oh, all yeah. the time. I feel like taunt is a big deal um because that's actually something i brought up early on and, and several of us brought up early on in sure. smite you know when you don't have a way to get someone off of your support mm -hmm. but to use hard cc and then you don't have that hard cc to use in a team fight because you just got somebody off of your support yep. that that's you know that that makes the game feel a little one dimensional, I guess, mm -hmm. um, you know, where there's only, there's always only one thing you can do to, um, to protect people. And it's the same thing you do to start a team fight. Um, and then Athena enters the battleground with <laughs> a taunt. Yep. And I mean, that was, that was something that we talked about was we need some sort of taunt, yeah. um, you know, whether it be an item that gives you a short taunt or, or whatever, we need some sort of taunt. And I think that's why, I, to me, um, I mean, I know her ultimate is, is insane, too. Yeah. But I, 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 I could see her taunt being a huge reason why people play her in a supporting role. Mm -hmm. um, just because, I mean, it's, that, that changes everything about what someone wants to do. Yeah. So they have to time things differently. They have to try to draw it out. Um, I, I think taunt changes. The, I, I'd like to see more taunt in the game, even though, when it's being done to you, it's probably one of the most frustrating things. Yep, that completely. Can be done to you. Completely. Um, yep. But besides knock up, but that's a different yes. story. Yes. Um, that's, a little bit. That's something. Yeah. <laughs> but um. But yeah. So I, I I think taunt is probably even though it really only exists on one character, I think that's one of the most significant things that's been added to the game. That. A mechanic you're accustomed to yeah. in MOBAs and MMOs and stuff like that. So yeah, that that would be, yeah, that would that would be something that's one of the most impactful things to me. Okay, sure, without a doubt. So let's go ahead and bring in Requiem here in a minute. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring him in, and once again, guys, he can ask a question, he can give a comment, he can just say hi, hello, Duke, love you, bye bye, click. So whatever works out. So let's go ahead and bring him in here, and uh, we do have Requiem here. Requiem, how's it going? Welcome to Smite Talk. Uh, it's going good. Thank you for having me on. Um, I, I suppose you want to hear my questions. Sure. So what, what question do you have for Duke or I? 
Um, well, it was actually on a comment uh, about Please. Athena because you were just talking about the uh, taunt. Yep. Um, the Athena taunt, it's so great if you're playing like a jungle Athena like Lasses. I was watching him play it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's excellent for team fights and baiting. You taunt them and then you pull them in and you just have your entire team just explode <laughs> yeah. on everything. Yeah, I forgot that, that a lot of people um, use her as a jungler now, especially Lass, as sure. use her as a jungler now. Um, yeah, and that's brutal. I, to have, I, it's one thing to be sitting in lane with a support Athena who can taunt you. It's another thing for Athena to show up out of nowhere and taunt you. Then that's just, that. yeah, that's a nightmare situation for a lot of people. So I can see why that really throws people off. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, yeah. And uh, the... Oh, hang on. You go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, what else you got? Go for it. Uh, I was going to ask, uh, if you could change anything about Smite, like any god or anything, what would you uh, change? That, does it have to be a god change, necessarily? <laughs> it can be anything, like if you want to add a map or whatever. Okay, all right. The one thing I would change about Smite is, uh, which they've been going in this direction, so it's okay. cool, um, okay. is, uh, is more... Um, a greater depth of social experience. Um, so, you Ooh, know, we've got a better okay. friends list than we used to have. Yep. Uh, we've got the, the cool new icons, which actually are a favor sync too, which, which is really good to have. Um, but I, I just feel like there needs to be more things that you can do within the game with, you know, not just your friends list, but, you know, just to make it more of a social game, you know, whether it's, you know, you can, you know, link up your Twitter account to which, you know, WoW did this yeah. and people were, you know, there were mixed <laughs> reviews about it. But, but you know, with a game like Smite, where you're going in and out of matches on a consistent basis, I think it'd be cool to be able to connect your Twitter account to your Smite account. And it says, hey, you know, player name has, you know, just gone into Conquest, uh, you know, and then maybe you could even connect your Twitch to that too. Watch them live at blah, 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 you know, or whatever. So I, I, I just think there's... There's things you could do to connect people um, in and outside of the game a little better that would that would really make it feel more like an experience and not just a game that somebody's playing. So that that's what I would like to see more more of a social atmosphere within Smite. And I'm not saying you know necessarily you have a global chat channel, sure, because we know how <laughs> out of control that can get. Um, but just more things that you can do with your friends, you know, not necessarily, uh, I don't know if I go so far as you can create a chat room because that's kind of what creating a clan does. Yeah. But I don't know, just, just more, more social features, even if it's something as simple as, Hey, this guy is, you know, starting a conquest match, you know, on Twitter or Facebook or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that'd be cool just to have a better, a better social experience that it's not only telling people about the game more, but it's also, you know, it, it's it's making you it's making your online identity um, a little more noticeable. You know, it's making it's giving you as you know the random smite player. Um, it's getting giving giving you more of a, a, a I don't know a, a web presence, I guess. So sure, I I, I would love to see that. So I, I'm sorry that that probably wasn't <laughs> the, the direction you wanted that question to go, Re Requiem, because you probably oh, wanted no, me to change was, a god. Like, but, that was fine. Yeah, all right, cool. So do you have any more questions or comments for us? Uh, I was going to ask, uh, what do you think about Smite's presence in, like, the MOBA field? Because it's really unique compared to uh, League of Legends, Dota, or any of those, because it's the only MOBA that's in, like, third person. Sure. Uh, how do you think that uh, makes it against the competition? Sure, I'll take it first, and I'll throw it to Duke. Um, yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. So uh, definitely, you know, taking a look at it, you have to remember, like, Smite came into the MOBA scene a little late. Like, it wasn't, you know, Smite wasn't there when the MOBA scene exploded, which was the day of Riot and, and Valve with Dota 2 and, and also League of Legends. And uh, actually, the original Dota you can look at with your MOBAs and stuff. And, and there, were, there were some games definitely before that. But if you're looking at industry giants like League of Legends and Dota 2, um, the, as your original question said, you know, what is their position? You have to remember that just from an outside perspective, this is me giving my opinion, looking at it, you know, um, 
Smite is something different and unique. So it's it's go it's looking at the success of of League of Legends and Dota two with with their bird's eye view type of two D style there, and then going ahead and capitalizing on that and developing a a three D model which hits the hearts of so many people. Like it pulled me in because I played World of Warcraft and I love that 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 view that you had there and it felt so comfortable. And if you literally looked at like World of Warcraft and cut out everything except for the PvP aspect, like that's what we see uh, with a mixture of MOBA. So to me, it's kind of, if I was to put a, a place for Smite, it would be the new age of MOBA. Uh, it would kind of be that next step going from your traditional MOBA style and expanding it to a whole different style with skill shot and th- third dimension. So that would be my explanation. What do you got, Duke? Um, I would say as long as All right. <laughs> let me let me try to let me try to generalize and temper this as much as possible. Sure. As long as the big the big kids in the pool um <laughs> or the big the big fish in the pond. Yep. Um as long as they keep doing MOBA they're always going to be the big fish. Okay. Uh, I mean, yep. let's not kid ourselves. Um, however, if you look at what Smite's doing right now, um, like Stu tweeted out earlier, um, breaking their concurrency records this weekend. Um, yeah. And just the crazy things that are going on with the esports scene. Um, I mean, it's slowly but surely getting there, but you're going to have a tournament in about a month mm-hmm. that – the prize pool was doubled by the player base. Yeah. So that, I mean, that, that sort of gives you some, some, you know, easy calculations you can do, but it it does, uh, it does scream, Hey, there's more to this game than, you know, we, we wear funny hats and sunglasses, you know, there, (laughs) there's, there's actually, you know, there, there's actually something going on with this thing. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, which that I think that's why a lot of people jump to the conclusion that I was fired because it's like, yep. um, which I wasn't, <laughs> we've already established that, <laughs> but, uh, because it's like, wow, smite is growing and getting bigger and you've got more people involved in the community than, than ever before, um, from the company side, which is really cool. Um, and then you've got more people, um, more people paying attention from the sort of media slash content creator side. I mean, you had Angry Joe playing Smite sure. a couple of days ago, yep. right? So, um, so yeah, I, and, and you've got Smosh who's you know really paying attention to to uh, to Smite. So. Mm-hmm. It, and all kinds of other stuff. So, you know, when it's Toby Turner, I'm going to be really excited because he's one of my favorite YouTubers. <laughs> but anyway, maybe maybe this will get out to him. Uh, yes, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, uh, he has a, his guilty pleasure is Octane Pro. That, that's, that's, that's right. That's, that's right. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, all, all that all that hype, I guess, to, to say Smite is in a unique position to be, in my opinion, the only third person or the only like, you know, non-traditional MOBA worth watching. Mm -hmm. How about that? There you go. How about that? (laughs) Yeah. So, um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's already, in my opinion, it's already there and I'm not trying to be cocky about it. I mean, I don't work for the company anymore. I don't have to say that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so of course I'm on their channel right now, but whatever. (laughs) Um, how ironic. Yeah. But, I mean, seriously, it, you know, make that your marketing message, Todd. You know, it's like the, it really is. It's the only non-traditional viewpoint mm-hmm. MOBA worth watching. It, sure. it is right now, and I, I have a feeling it stays that way. I don't think anyone okay. – I don't think anyone – all right, let me be really, really blunt. I don't think anyone has the balls to do it. Oh, okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. Not and I, and, that's a good and again, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be a scumbag or anything about it, but yeah. it's just people know what makes money. People know, um, what's, um, people know what's successful. I mean, mm-hmm. Riot has shown what's successful. Valve has shown what's successful in this market. And I just don't think anyone, I mean, look over the past two years of all the games that have gone into beta. They're all, isometric exact same items just with a different coat of yeah. paint yep 
slightly different map variations, but basically <laughs> play the same th same way. And and I'm not being insulting. Cause, I mean, I have people, I, I have friends that work at these companies mm -hmm. that make these other games. And I actually enjoy some of these other games sure. more than maybe, you know, League. Mm -hmm. So um, not more than Smite, but more than, you know, the other isometric games. Sure, sure. However, still, I mean, just look at where they are. I mean, you, you look at where they are now compared to where Smite was during their – um, during the same time frame, mm -hmm. and Smite was doing better. Oh yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And and we're not backed by, you know, one of the biggest publishers or one, two, three, four, five, sure, six, sure. Of the big public biggest publishers in the world of gaming. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I I mean I I I think if Smite, I think if High Res continues doing what they're doing. And, you know, tempers things a little bit more than, you know, put in gauntlet of, you know, gauntlet of godhood sure. with what, what they did with, with thieves the other day. <laughs> um, just, and I think one of the ways you fix that is a public test server, but I mean, that's sure. a completely different topic. Sure. Um, but uh, maybe we can get into that later. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I think if high keeps doing what they're doing, um, there'll be the only non-traditional MOBA worth watching because they already are. And it's, it's only growing and you've got people again, like Smosh, the creatures, angry Joe mm -hmm. and all kinds of other people always talking about smite um, or, you know, new people like angry Joe um, talking about smite. I mean, I mean, that's a, that's a really, really, really big deal. Sure. And you know, it's completely out of, I, I don't want to keep harping on this, but it's completely okay. out of angry Joe's wheelhouse. Okay. You know, he, he's not into MOBAs. The only MOBA he plays is the superhero-based one, which I enjoy too. Okay. But he only plays that because if you ever notice, he's always wearing a Superman shirt. Oh, so sure, it's, sure. you know, it's an IP that he's extremely interested in. So, of course, he plays that and he enjoys it, which is, you know, that's a lot of the reason why I play that game is because it's, you know, I grew up on comic books. So, um, but Smite is so far out of his normal box and he played it and had fun with it the other yeah. night. So, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of the credit for that goes to you know people behind the scenes that you guys barely know exist, like you know Gabriel Mahaley. Sure, sure. Um, you know, always reaching out to people, you know, making sure they know what's going on with Smite, whether they want to or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you have people behind the scenes doing that stuff, and then you just have what Smite's doing publicly, and yeah, my I. I'll come back to my two statements. My two statements are, it's going to be the, I, I predict it okay. remains the only non-traditional MOBA worth watching. And that's because nobody else has the balls to do it. Sure. Sure. Very good statement. Well, Requiem, thanks for coming on. Good questions, man. And uh, have a good night. Uh, thank you guys. And uh, Duke, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Requiem. Man, you give the man a microphone, it'll talk for hours. Holy cow. I know, Woo! I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, it's yeah, all demon, good. It's all yeah, demon me. machine <laughs> Demon Machine experienced this early on in Smite <laughs> and, and I just I have to learn to shut up sometimes. It's sorry. all good. That's why hey, the show's called Smite Talk, so I think you fit the title <laughs> pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in Corbats and get one of his questions. So all right. Corbats, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? Hello? Hey, hello. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Good. So what question do you have for Duke or I? All right. So like maybe like at the end of the day, you know, what's your overall goal as a content creator? That's a very good question. I'll throw that to Duke first. Okay. Overall goal is to, I mean, my overall goal is just to build community because I mean, that's, that's what I've been doing in gaming since I've been in online gaming. So my goal, um, you know, is is to build a community. Like, uh, I mean, best example to me, one of the best examples of person of a person who builds community, like their own community within and without the Smite community, is is Dry Bear. Mm. I mean, the, the guy, you know, he has people, and I ha I had someone like <laughs> exasperatedly say this to me the other day, but I thought it was hilarious. He has people who call themselves dry cubs. 
Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> they identify themselves as his spawn. <laughs> that's a pretty, I mean, that's, that's, sure. y- you've pretty much established. I don't know if that's community or a cult at that point, but, but <laughs> we still, see what he's doing. We see what he's doing, but still, I mean, that, 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 that's a pretty big deal. And, um, I mean, that, that's my goal is to build, sure. you know, I, I don't want anyone calling themselves anything related to my name, <laughs> you know, like that. However, it, it's to, it's to build community, you know, just okay. to have, have a group of people that that always want to hang out with each other and and do fun stuff whether it be online or even in person i'm going to start doing some um like live event type stuff here soon um talking with some people so so yeah and and being able to connect those two worlds you know like um you know real life world and online world because you know people people love anonymity on on the internet but um i've found that live events are are where um it's it's not as awkward as people think it should be um because you kind of know the people mm-hmm. yeah they're a little yeah people are a little different than i, I mean especially with streaming because you see everybody's faces now it's not like it's not like five ten years ago in gaming where all you knew was someone's pseudonym you know yeah, yeah. um it, it's not it's not just a screen name anymore you see people's faces um you see people's habits you know um you you see people while they may be sort of changing their personality a little bit for the camera you're you're still seeing them in the flesh and i i think that's a big deal and and it makes it easier to connect real life community with um online community so yeah build community so long answer again sorry (laughs) I'll get better. So, so it's definitely official. It's you now, you now have Dukelings. That that is your that is your, you have That's Dukelings. That's awful. <laughs> that is awful. Um, I don't want that. To, to answer that question for myself, uh, I'd have to say for me, it's you know why do, why do I do the you know why do I do the content day in and day out? Why do I host these podcasts for the for the Smite Game uh, channel? Why do I do some of these own on my own? You know the YouTube's everything. Why do I invest the time? For me, it's just building uh, my brand. You could say. Uh, reason being is because I would love, you know, everybody, anybody not that working in the gaming industry would love an opportunity to, if not do this type of content creation as a uh, source of income, uh, would love to work within the gaming industry. So for me, it's building my brand, building my awareness in the community to the point where either one, it pays for my day to day living or two that that uh, an opportunity comes along that says wow we like what you're doing let's go ahead and make this full time um so that is why i go ahead and do what i do every day so good question yeah really good question any other uh, questions you have core bats um all right that was good do you, do you think like smite like you know i can go up to like a random person and be like oh do you play L- league or whatever and they'll be like oh yeah but like do you think I'll be able to go with a random person and be like, do you play Smite? And then, like, will they recognize that name? Like, will sure. Smite ever be big enough as League? I think that's a, a open-ended question because, I mean, just as Duke kind of talked about the possibilities that there's, there's no other games out there right now that are actually building that, that third, you know, that 3D model set up for, for MOBAs. Um, I think now, no. I mean, I couldn't go down the street and be like, hey, do you know Smite? Whatever. But... I would say give it give it a few years after launch and after these tournaments. I mean, right now we're looking at a Smite launch tournament of 175 plus. Well, when you start the the more money, I mean, as the money makes the world go round, and the more money that that you know is out there for these tournaments moving forward in the next few years, the more well known it's going to get because bigger sponsors are going to get involved. There's more marketing, there's more advertising. So that's my thoughts on it. What are your thoughts, Duke? I I mean, I I don't know how much it necessarily happens now but Mm -hmm. i i think it's i I mean i'm with you i think it's um it's there's a strong opportunity for it to happen in a fairly short period of time sure and really i i think again i think i think the i think the best day for high res and the best day for you as a fan of smite um everybody's watching and you know Mm -hmm. um the the caller i uh was it corbats is that right uh, yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I think the uh, I think the best day is um, you say something about Smite and someone says, 
Oh yeah, that's that uh, that's that non-traditional MOBA that's like the only one worth playing, right? I I, I think that's the. <laughs> I think, I think it's a really good day for high res and it's a really good That's day right. for you as a fan because yeah. again it's true right now and as as long as things uh keep going in the right direction then then that will i, I think that will become what people say about smite honestly sure. and i think that's what would pop up in a in a conversation like that is yeah man yeah I, i've played that game i i still play it from you know maybe they're not as religious a player as sure. as you guys yeah you know, i always find it funny calling saying religious <laughs> about, a game about gods anyway yeah. but maybe they don't play the game as much as you do but they think of it fondly and they think of it once again as the best non-traditional moba that exists sure so, yeah sure yeah. awesome Awesome. Well, Corbats, I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, we'll keep it moving here so we can get as many questions as we can. But uh, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. And I'm just going to shout out to Michael9898. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, man. Um, so we're, uh, we'll are we go ahead and bring in uh, Noogle here in a minute. Uh, he's currently on deck. But I want to check with Duke. How's your timing? You okay for time right now? Uh, yeah. I just, um, speaking of things I'm doing That's outside right. of Smite, um, yeah, I have some. <laughs> I have something going on at nine o'clock that I need okay. to set up. So about an hour from now that I Perfect. need to set up Perfect. for, I guess about 20 minutes in advance. So okay. I got okay. about 40, 30, 40 minutes. Here. Okay. Definitely don't want to abuse your time at all there. Um, so we did have Thank people you. go ahead and submit questions to Duke and we're going to try to like quick fire question these Duke the best we can. Um, oh boy. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I'll try to be short. <laughs> that is on the complete I'll try to be short about it. <laughs> yes. Um, and, uh, so I'm going to go through and, um, clear out some of the questions that people have asked already. Um, and okay. before we do that, we'll bring on Noogle. Um, we'll, we'll get his, some of his questions, his thoughts, and then we'll kind of jump into some of these quick fire questions. So let's go ahead and bring on, uh, Noogle here and, uh, okay. Noogle, welcome to Smite Talk. Thanks for coming out tonight. Are you there? Noogle. All right. I don't, I don't think Noogle's there. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I think I think it could be the radio problem where people are listening to it on the stream. That's right. You have that, that, that long delay. Hey, you know what? We've had nobody yet tonight that's gone ahead and turned it on. You can hear your voice in the background when their, when their mic kicks in because that's the radio mm -hmm. problem. We always hear radio hosts be like, hey, can you turn down the show? Um, mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and bump Noogle out and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, bring on, uh, let's see here. We're going to bring on Lucent Horse. Uh, Lucent Horse, are you with us? That I am. How's it going? It's going hello, good. Hello. It's going good, sir. So what question do you have for myself or Duke this week? This week for you, I have a question. Um, a lot of questions uh, that you guys have been talking about, or uh, yeah, a lot of topics you guys have been talking about kind of revolve around this uh, same theme. Okay. So I think it's just good timing for this question, really. Um, wow. You're so good at this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so... You know, you guys are talking about features that have been added, you know, stuff you like, whatever, all that fun stuff. What feature do you think you'd like to see put in that isn't already in? Now, like, you know, as in, like, you know, maybe, like, an, like a, you know, a new ultimate, a new uh, feature for, like, an ability, a new item, stuff like that. I, I have this answer. Do you want me to answer first? Uh, please go for it. Mana burn. Period. Mana, Mana burn. burn. Oh, that's like that's almost Nobody... like a shadow priest style. Okay. Woof. Yeah, but but you get you get to the, I mean, I I've talked about that for a long time, sure. but I I don't know if Smite can really handle it because everyone runs on mana. So you yeah. know, what do you do at mm -hmm. that point? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no. Can you still no. hear me? Uh, I can still hear you. It yeah. did drop for a second here. I'm just uh, checking something. Um, I, right, we'll it looks play. like it looks like the stream drops. Let me go ahead and bring it back up. I don't. I have no clue what happened there. Um, all right. Well, no, you're yeah, still okay. you're still with <laughs> us there. So uh, let me yeah, go yeah. Ahead. Sorry about that, Lucent. Um, okay. Yeah, I think we're all don't back. Don't want don't want uh, don't want Chad to miss out on any of the gold. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, so go ahead and get started. We're back up. I, I said the someone says I, I said the forbidden word on stream. That's right. Uh, you broke it. Yeah, I said I said mana burn, and That's all right. of a sudden it's like nope. And Erez Todd into Bill went and ran for the power cable to rip it out yeah. of the wall real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they control the Twitch channel with a. They control the interwebs with one plug. <laughs> all of the internets. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Yeah, mana burn, and then alternate resource pools. The, those are the two things for me, and I think you've got to have. <laughs> 
I think you can't do them in that order. You've got to have alternate resource pools before you can ever add man, you know, a, a mana burn character sure. or item sure. or anything like that. So yeah, because you, know, you got to have an answer for it. I mm. mean, um, ultimately, mobas are rock paper scissors, so you can't have. You, you you can't you can't put in a mechanic like mana burn without having an answer for it. So yeah. Hmm. So okay. those are the two things for me. Okay. Nice. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the things that I uh, definitely like to see is just moving outside, and, and it goes kind of hand in hand with the mana burn. It's just going outside of uh, their traditional health and mana aspect in regards to like this mm. is all we have, and look into other aspects. And you know, I talk a lot about uh, you know World of Warcraft just because of the fact that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. World of Warcraft changed the gaming industry, and I think everyone within the with within gaming uh, can go ahead and see that just with the way that they developed their game, the mechanics they added in, the way the company is. And so for me, and these are just examples I'm not throwing out there, but you know, things that you would get like like rogues would have or warriors would have uh, within World of Warcraft. It's great to see some different type of mechanic added in outside of mana. Now, granted, that adds huge headaches for high res developers because all your items are built around mana and everything's affected by mana. Mm. So mana is so intertwined um, that you know that's kind of why I say that. But I would just love to see other mechanics when it comes to to substitute out mana with something else. But I think it would have to be a lot, um, without a doubt. Um, so yeah, any other questions you have for us today, Losing Horse? Uh, of course. Why? 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 <laughs> it's me. Why wouldn't I have it anymore? <laughs> so to be the um, the um, disturber that I am, sure. Thanks if what usually goes there, but you know, it's my game, so I don't want to say that word. Anyways, <laughs> um. With uh, you talking, with uh, Duke being a support player, and Octane, I think you already know where I'm going with this. Uh oh. How do you two stack up as your mirror players? Oh, why do you? Why do you? You had to call an instigate. <laughs> you had to call an instigate with Kelly, as to. Uh, yeah. uh, no, it's, uh, uh, that's an easy answer. I suck at your mirror. Oh, <laughs> see, that's an easy win. Well, <laughs> dang. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you couldn't instigate a fight there. No, I mean I, I don't play him. I just don't play them, so I I, I don't. Um, I actually enjoy Makir uh, Makirs. Makirs. Uh, Makirs. <laughs> yeah. Makirs mechanics. Um, I was trying to con combine the two words there. Yeah. I enjoy his mechanics, but I just enjoy. Um, I don't know. I I enjoy Athena's more. See, see, but there's something there because like I, I. I'm not very good at Athena, so that it kind of goes both ways. Like I would love to be I better. I didn't say I was good. Okay. <laughs> I never said that. Okay, I would I would like to be better at Athena because I'm not very good with Athena, but I feel that I'm decent with Ymir because I have a one percent better win ratio than high res Kelly. Just throwing out Kelly there from last week. So, oh wow! You know, wow. I was playing a lot of I was playing a lot of Ymir this week, trying to get that percentage up. I was at 58. She was, <laughs> she was at 57. So. Um, Nice. Yeah. So, anyways, Lucid Horse, I appreciate you coming on. I'm gonna keep the questions flowing from everybody, but uh, have a good Definitely. night. Definitely. Have a have a good night. I appreciate it. Thank you. You as well. All right. Let's take a few questions uh, from the Ask.fm, and then we'll kind of keep moving here um, for everyone here. So, uh, what was your favorite thing? And uh, we'll just kind of throw them out there. What was your favorite thing about working at High Res Studios? Um. Honestly, people I worked with. Um. I I sat. Um. The last. I don't know, a few months to a year. Okay. Uh, I I I sat uh, between Gavin and Gabe. Okay. And th those are two and and near enough to Austin, and those three guys are just hilarious to me. Um, okay. And, and all in their own little way. Um. So yeah, really, ultimately the people. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so just okay. Yeah. That's I mean, and that's uh, you know, and that's interesting because you can get you can be and and this goes with anyone in the workforce. Like you can be being paid a fortune, and you can have a great job title, but if the people around you are horrible, it make or breaks mm -hmm. and make or breaks an experience. So I can definitely they definitely can. see that. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, people are asking, can we hear Duke sing for good old times? Did you used to sing, Duke? Uh, Did yeah, I'm sing? a singer. Um. Yeah, I was actually my first stint in college. Oh, okay. Um, was actually uh, I was a music education major. Oh, um, interesting. So, yeah, I didn't finish. Um, but um, <laughs> just because I was more interested in actually singing than okay. writing music necessarily. Sure. So, sure. Um, no, I will not sing today. <laughs> okay. Um, however, I, this, this looks like 
the best time for a pitch ever. Sure. However, I am planning as I hit certain goals with my personal stream. Okay. To do to do like singing days where you know I just spend you know I'll play a game and try to sing at the same time okay. or something like that. Um, I like it. So and then also you know just you know special presentation. I'm playing with stuff right now. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I've got I've got random stuff in my hands. I gotta stop. That's why I have to fold my hands so I so I don't. Fidget. That's right. But, uh, fold your hands and put them in your lap and be a good little boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, I, I I plan to do you know a special presentation where I just uh, where you know I sing a song or something okay. you know dedicate it to a community member or to okay. you know my wife, which is what I tip, what I did the last time I sang on stream. So, okay. Yeah. So yeah, and and I have better equipment now. Yes, right. To do that, right? Than singing through a headset mic. So yeah. So yeah, I I half at least half of the reason I have the equipment I have now is so that I can do some more musical stuff. Okay. So, so yeah, I plan on doing some singing streams. So that's why you need to follow the channel <laughs> and follow that's me right. on Twitter. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, well, that's awesome. I didn't even know that about you. And like, we've been talking back and forth for like two years now. And I'm like, wow, I did not know that that was definitely one of your hobbies. And uh, that's I, great. I sing on stream. Yeah. I, 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 I sing. miss that. I miss that. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Dang it. Somebody find me a VOD. Uh, on the other hand, let's keep moving forward here. Um, you already talked about what your it's favorite. Not great, but that's right. Uh, you already talked about what your favorite position Smite is and such. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. What is your favorite shooter? If you were to have to pick one. Global agenda. Uh, the less political answer, please. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, honestly, it's, okay. it's one of the only shooters I've ever played. Oh, really? I don't okay. Play a lot of shooters. Okay. Um, so you didn't play Counter Strike just, like when it first came out, or Half Life, no, or uh, I'm not a, Halo? Okay. That's okay. No, it's allowed. I, I'm just I'm not I'm not Mr. Competitive Gamer, you know, I, which I know is what you have to be if you're in the Smite community, right? <laughs> but um, but yeah, I just um, yeah, I just I I I I guess I. I played too much tab targeting early on in my online gaming experience, so I uh, I don't have the the necessarily the best Twitch skills um, in the gaming sense, not the streaming sense. Okay, um, which I'm getting there on streaming, but um, but yeah, I I just don't have necessarily the reflexes that I feel like I need to have to actually enjoy playing a shooter. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um. So so I'm more into tactical type stuff. I I, I mean I'm, I've been thinking of trying out. You know that MMO that's built around, you know, shooters and factions and hmm. mechs and stuff like that. Yeah, that but, one called Titanfall. You know, I'm not. I'm not. No, <laughs> not that one. Um, <laughs> I should check it out. It seems everyone enjoys it. It is. Um, it's pretty cool. But um, but yeah, I um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna check out some shooters. Okay. Here soon, just to kind of kind of mix it up. Sure. But I don't know that I'll ever be a, a real hardcore shooter fan. So, okay. I mean, honestly, the only shooter I've ever played for an extended period of time is Global Agenda. Okay. So, from a purely empirical standpoint, sure. it sure. must be my favorite. Okay, so, yeah. okay, sure. And uh, within Smite, uh, you mentioned Athena a few times, but who? I don't think we asked you, who's your favorite god? If you had to pick one god where you just love to play the most, who would it be? Not Ra. Ra? Okay, honestly. cool. Yeah, I, I enjoy Ra. Yeah, while I'm not like this, you know, super um, shooter type guy, I enjoy the skill shots of Raw. Um, mm -hmm. They're um, I, I I like that you really have to plan and predict what you're doing with him for the most part. Yep. Um, and then you can still support while doing it. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, someone asked after the tournament in March, um, what yep. do you feel will happen to the esports scene after the high prize pool falls off? I don't. Uh, falls off is probably the wrong way to say that, not necessarily to correct the person who asked sure, it, but sure. I, I don't see it falling off. Okay. Um, I, I see, I see it being a really big event Okay. and it being big enough that high res, especially with so many people coming from out of town you're coming, right? I will be there. I'll actually be working yeah. on the production team right. while I'm there. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. So you get, you're going to have Octane Pro, you're going to have Gank First Gaming, you're going to have, uh, I believe Squidish is coming, I could be wrong, but I believe yeah. Squidish is coming, you have Mesmerize coming, mm -hmm. you have um, you have all these guys from the community, and of course all the players, Sure. Um, so you're going to have, what, eight teams worth of players, yep. and they're, and they're, and some of their entourage and representation sure. and stuff like sure. that, so, I mean, you're going to have a lot of Smite community there, 
and really esports is about is ultimately about having people that enjoy being around esports sure. right so i think between the live audience and you know the people that are com that are going to be hanging out from um game vid expo and mm -hmm. stuff like that yep. and then and then the twitch audience you know people who can't make it for whatever reason whether it be financial yep. or just time or whatever um i think it's going to be i think it's actually going to be bigger than high res expects it to be okay and um and and i really think the next tournament is going to be a lot bigger prize pool sure, I, sure. I, like so i i said all that to say falls <laughs> off, you know the money falls off i i I think it's going to be a bigger prize pool. Yeah, and I think so, the cool thing is I, too because I think you're because I think you're going to have sponsors too. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. You want to have, or yeah, the the company making the game needs to put money behind it, right? But ultimately, where the prize pools get huge is when you have these huge sponsors that say, "Whoa, these guys are doing something big." Their community yep. doubled the prize pool for this yep. for this tournament. We really want to be. We, we really want to be involved with people with a community that takes that kind of action. Sure, yeah. sure. No, I think it's a really good answer. And the big thing is there is, you know, the, the Poseidon skin was definitely like a, like a first time type of deal. And we now see it works. So there's a lot of things that uh, high risk studios could do in the future to not have to fork over the cash to pay for these prize pools that can release certain things to help fuel that, uh, that, that cost for the prize pools yeah. to keep it going, even if there aren't sponsored tournaments from sponsors or organizations that host them yeah. and stuff like that. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity there. Um, jumping off from there, uh, what is Duke's favorite esports team? North America and NA. Only pick one for each. Like I said, I'm not a <laughs> competitive guy. You can have favorites. You don't work for high res anymore. Yeah, but then people are like, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> I can tell you mine. It's okay. No, no, you don't do that. Don't be the host of the show on the channel doing that. That's Come on. Right. Um, I, I mean, I, I, okay. It's ultimately going to come down to how I operate as a person and sure. it's based on the, you know, where I know people, mm -hmm. um, sure. or, or the amount of people I know and the relationships I have. So it's going to be dignitas for North America. Yep. Um, because I, because I've spent more time with those guys. I know those guys better. I talk with them on a, on a fairly consistent basis. So, um, but yeah, that'd be my NA team, my okay. EU team. Who do I talk to more? Um, you talk, whoever I talk to the most, they're my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I am. I, yeah. I guess I'll kind of have to be, I'll have to be sort of empirical in okay. this. Um, uh, let's see, who would I, hang on, let me go to the next question sure. and let me, sure. I'm actually going to measure who I talk to more okay. and then we'll go from there. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, Sounds yeah. good. Um, yeah. let's see, uh, quick thoughts on the matchmaking system. Do you like the algorithm that's currently used to team up with players or would you like to see high res take on another games matchmaking system? Um, what was the question again? <laughs> what are your thoughts on the current matchmaking al algorithm okay, that okay, is okay, used okay, yeah, and would you like yeah, to see good. it? Okay. All right, cool. Um, I think people would be surprised to find out that most of the, most of the matchmaking that you see in Smite is the same matchmaking that exists in other games. Okay. And to um, on an on another note, um, okay. I mean games with matchmaking, we should qualify that really um, sure. because a lot of people it's just lobby based, right? Yeah. So, um, and then it's just a crapshoot at that point. So, yeah, I think I think people would be really surprised. Not only that high res's matchmaking is very similar to other people's, but that they take a <laughs> lot of steps that, that other people do not take to try to get the match as close as possible. Mm -hmm. But there's always there, there there's there's an overwhelming um monkey wrench, I, I suppose it would be, or an overwhelming um detrimental factor to um to matchmaking and that's letting people group together. I mean, if you had a fully, now I'm not saying 
it would completely solve the issue. Sure. But if you had a fully solo, you can, you know, you're only you and you exist in, in the world of you mm -hmm. within the matchmaker, you have a stronger chance of it, of it making better matches. Um, a lot stronger chance, but most people play online games to play with their friends. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I mean, that's, a, I, I'm, I'm making, we're both making a generalization there, but, um, I, I, I mean, if you're, if you're online, are, are you like, you're, you're playing to either play against other human beings or play with other human beings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's kind of hard to put people in a position where they can only play by, by themselves sure. or they can only play against other human beings all the time. So, no, no, I think that's yeah. a good question there. Um, yeah. and, uh, let's see here. We'll take one more question, um, and this one's a little bit different, but um, they say, do you know of any reason why we don't see more Hindu gods? As a follower of Hinduism, I feel as though we are underrepresented compared to Greeks and Chinese, which this question is unique because a lot of the times you always hear about yeah, people that are from like, a different angle. Exactly. You always hear from people that are that the different angle where they're like, you're misrepresenting our gods and our, and our religion. And they get real flustered and frustrated and look at some of the changes we saw with Cali. Um, and, you know, definitely something that, yeah. you know, some changes there. This is on the other side of the spectrum, which is really unique because you don't usually hear from these people which say hey we like what you're doing we want more hindu gods i feel mm -hmm. you know i feel underrepresented so back to the question do you know why for some reason that you okay well can you explain it uh, can you explain uh you know how that process works in regards to is there really like a scaling when it comes down to what religions high res pulls from and doesn't pull from or why we don't see more hindu gods um <clears throat> I mean, I don't necessarily know the process okay. per se, okay. um, but I do know that a lot of a lot of other mythologies, mm -hmm. the um, the stories are generally agreed upon. Um, like you know, Zeus is this is this deity mm -hmm. in 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 Greek mythology. Ares is this deity in in mythology. So. Um, the, the trick with a lot of the Hindu gods, mm -hmm. um, is that they, a lot of times have very, very, very different stories. Okay. Now, this is, this is just conjecture by me. Okay. Sure, this is, sure. this is things that I see yep. and things that I think kind of gum up the works of getting more Hindu gods out. Sure. No. So, um, I mean, for the person asking the question, I don't know if you know that there was actually a little bit of a controversy where a guy who really liked media attention made a big deal about Smite. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I said it that way. That's anyway, yep. Yep. Um, I don't work for him anymore. <laughs> there you go. That's <laughs> right. To, hey, don't hey, don't to. be burning bridges. I did hear a statement that said, at this time, I, I, I have to step down for the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean... <laughs> I Seriously, <know. laughs> I, I don't want to prioritize anymore, so I don't have to. You know, I don't have to be extremely tempered about yes, this. But yes, a guy who correct. really enjoys being in the media, yep. You know, I, I mean, this is just based on what I saw, and yeah. I looked at everything he's done in the past, and it's always, can I get a lot of media attention for this? Yeah. Oh, I don't get a lot of media attention for this. Okay, I'm gonna go find something else. Sure, so sure. whatever. Um. So this guy made a big deal about it. Um. A few, uh, a bunch of people sent us hate mail, and when I say hate, I mean hate mail, oh. um, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's always interesting when people in their hate mail. I can't get into too much detail. Sure, no, but it's always no, interesting. Definitely. It's always interesting when hate mail is coming from people who are claiming that we're misrepre mm -hmm. misrepresenting someone. And that that person is supposed to be peaceful, and then they, sure. you know, they curse you with cancer <laughs> at what? the end of that hate mail. So it's just yeah. like, that's not very peaceful, but yes. whatever. Yes. So yep. um, off that, no, let's get off that subject. And see, I'm playing with clothespins again. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, so getting off that subject, I, I think it really comes down to a lot of a lot of Hindu deities. The um, their story isn't as clear as a Zeus or an Ares or Apollo, you know, and, and with Greek and Roman um, or Greco-Roman myth mythology, 
a lot of that it's fairly clear, fairly consistent. And I, I think that's where, I think that's the main, one of the main things that kind of slows down what's going on with Hindus. Um, I mean, like with Mayans, it, I mean, there's been several Mayan guys, right? But there was one for the longest time. And that was basically for the community. Yeah. Now, he ends up being a very viable character, right? But, sure, sure. Um, um, with very with pretty interesting mechanics, but uh, but still, you know, it, he was sort of a Shablanke was sort of a joke for the community for mm -hmm. the whole end of the world 2012 yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it became, oh, well, we should probably add some more Mayans, and so there's a handful <laughs> more, right? Yeah. Um, um, but but still, their their mythology is extremely fluid i guess you could say mm -hmm. um it's it's not um they, they basically kind of have to settle on okay who do who do we want this god to be in smite <laughs> and you don't necessarily have to do that with greeks or um chinese um sure sure and stuff like that so yeah that that, that that's my overly long answer there <laughs> Well, that was our last question there. Did you have a European uh, uh, team that you were interested in, or are you still dwelling on that? Oh. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. that question. He's going to no, bring me I, back I, to I it. No, I started looking it up, and then I got into that question. Hang on. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> my, my favorite EU team. Let me, let mm -hmm. me find it. Let me make sure. Because the problem with all these sponsored teams is you got – that's right. People that used to be sponsored by somebody and, and now yeah. <laughs> they like yeah. to jump around a lot. I know, right? It, it's a little confusing. Um, <laughs> hang on, That's hang on, hang on, hang on. It's these guys right here. Uh, it's these guys. These guys. It's these guys. Yeah. Hang on. I I have to <laughs> again. I have to make sure I get. I, I'm looking up players, so I have to make sure I'm looking up the right team. Sure. Sure. No problem. Take your time. Uh, um, yep. 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 It's. I believe. Am I right? Okay, yeah. Um, it's the current SK Gaming. <laughs> okay. And, uh, hmm, who? Okay. I, I was trying to figure out who on that team, but okay. That's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's good to know. That's good. That's awesome. Well, that's great because SK Gaming was just picked up this past, you know, this, you know, this past week, we saw a lot of development there that SK Gaming kind of mm -hmm. reintroduced themselves back into the scene with going ahead and picking up a, a Team Q. Um, so that's great, which is kind of made up of <clears throat> a few different teams there. So that's great. Okay, cool. So and, and, and I'm not saying anything bad about the, the previous. No, no, not at all. Previously sponsored nope. SK Game. I'm just saying these are guys that, you know, um, well, it, it's mainly Proxy. I, you know, I've seen, I mean, Proxy's okay. been around yeah, for, for a while. really, 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 really long time. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's, <laughs> he just, you know, I, I enjoy, I enjoy the longevity of some of our smite players okay. and how they, they are at the top of the game when it comes to esports. Mm -hmm. and, um, proxy kind of waited in the wings for the longest time. And okay. then, um, or yeah, as far as I could tell, I mean, maybe he's been more involved than I think, because like I said, I'm, I'm not necessarily the esports champion of the world um but uh but yeah just i these guys that have been around the community for a long time <coughs> and have uh have have fought <laughs> to get the game noticed um sure. whether it be by friends or you know outside people or whatever i i really respect what they've done and uh so yeah i i would say I'd say SK Gaming, and mainly because of Proxy. And there's plenty of other EU guys that I talk to that I that I talk to more than Proxy. Okay. But just he's been around, and he's really uh, and and they're really putting it together. And, okay. And it's really cool to uh, to see what they're doing. So. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good to know. We're gonna take one last caller, guys. And we're gonna go ahead and round up our show here, and uh, let's go ahead and bring in Nihilus. And uh, Nihilus, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? Uh, it's good. Good, good. Uh, thank you very much for waiting. You're kind of waiting a while. So, what questions do you have for myself or Duke or comments? 
This um, is gonna it's be a troll call. This is a troll call. <laughs> no, it's it's going to be serious, dude. You <laughs> okay, don't have to worry. Okay, okay. okay. All right, this is for both of you. What okay. is what ultimate do you think is the most satisfying when you get a kill? Like needs ultimate when you hit it and it kills someone. You're just like, oh yes. Like what ultimate is the most satisfying to you? Okay, I'll throw it over to Duke first. Uh, to me, it's raw. Uh, that that's oh. where that's where a lot of my love for raw comes from is because his his snipe can be extremely hard to hit. Um, especially with very aware people on the on the other side of it. And okay. So, yeah, I I think and you know he's he's not the most damaging god in the game. Um, so yeah, I mean even built really heavy, there's still plenty of people who can nuke a lot better than he can. Yeah. And so yeah, that's I I would say, I would I would say for me it's raw because you're like man I made that snipe you know it it, it feels sort of like that shooter feeling where, where you, you really snipe somebody out that, you know, had every, have had plenty of opportunities to, to not, to not be taken down by you, but then you pulled it off. So sure. That's for, me. for me, it would have to be Ymir in the Digimir skin when he ultimates. Um, because nah. just just the way the explosion works and how it affects the atmosphere, like everything around you, the giant techno disco yes. ball. Yes, yes, yes. I uh, I definitely like it. I think it's really really cool. Um, I've always been a fan of Ymir, as you know. Kind of Duke picked Ra being one of his favorite characters. Ymir for me was definitely mm -hmm. one. And uh, just the way the explosion works, um, I've liked. I was pulled more towards that after they made the change to Ymir, where you could adjust the timing of how long it takes you for your ultimate to go mm -hmm. off, depending on you know your how long you let it last and stuff like that. So um, mine would have to be Ymir. Do you have any other questions for us? Um, this is for Duke. Duke, how do you feel about a Vamana skin that's modeled after you? Oh, what are you saying? What are you uh, saying? <laughs> uh, well, no, that that's been a long running joke in the community, so <laughs> that's fine. Um, I mean, that'd be fine. I. I, as long I as he gets royalties, thinking, royalties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Um, yeah, send me a buck for every skin. That's um, right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I you know, they're like, and, and this isn't like me being emo or anything sure. like that. But like, eventually, no one knows who I am at, as far as community manager or whatever. Um, so, I mean, there there were already people in the chat today who are like, "Who's Duke?" Mm -hmm. And so. Which I'm not offended by. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, I mean, especially in the world of live streaming, you know who you see. And a lot of people never saw me even while I was there, right? So, um, I, I think that becomes weird and awkward over time. It's just like you've got a former employee in the game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'd, I'd much rather see things that, that represent something that's broader in the game even if it's something that is, you know, connected to the player. So, you know, like, I'd, I'd rather see a way that you could somehow, you know, put a jersey on a character or, you know, put, like, I don't know, like people who win this first big tournament, sure. you know, you could get, you could get a, a, a whatever, I'm not going to say who I think did it, <laughs> um, but you could get, you could get a, a skin for a certain character or a certain group of characters, maybe the five characters that they play in the final. Sure. You know, I think it'd be great to be able to, for a limited time, get that skin, get a skin that has those guys' jersey on it. You know, that sure. that would be pretty cool. So, yeah. Um, so, but that, but that's broader appeal. You know, even if that team, even if that team stops playing Smite the day after the tournament, sure. you still know who they were, and there's still a history of who they were. Whereas with with you know, uh, you know, a former staff member, that it's not quite the same. So. No, no, I think that's a good answer. What other, any other questions you got before we say goodbye? Uh, no, I think I'm out of questions. So. All right. Well, thank you very much for calling in. Thank oh. you for being so sweet, Nihilus. <laughs> no problem. I wasn't gonna troll you this time. <laughs> this time. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. I expect it tomorrow. All right. Good night, guys. <laughs> good night. night. All right, guys, well, let's go ahead and round up the show here. Uh, we want to respect Duke's time and uh, go ahead and let you guys know that if you guys enjoyed the show, you want to check out other shows, check out the other guests that we've had on. Uh, more recently, we had people like Dry Bear and uh, Smitten on and F Dot and Hi Res Kelly and APC, and there's a whole list um, 18 episodes. So go ahead and check it out on iTunes if you're interested. Um, go ahead and look up Smite Talk. And also on an Android platform, you can use your favorite 
podcast uh, app. I use Beyond Pod and just look up Smite Talk and you could download it. It's the audio only version, audio only version. So if you're on the way to work, if you're at work in your cubicle, you need something to listen to, you're at the gym and you want to continue, you know, enjoying your Smite content, um, definitely check it out on there as well. Um, furthermore, special thanks to High Res Studios for hosting Smite Talk on this channel every week on Sundays at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern. I'm currently in the process of lining up the next guest for next week. Uh, I'll have more information here and be posting that on Twitter as we start to roll out. So uh, we'll throw it over to Duke. Duke, where can people check you out? You talked a lot about some of your ventures that you're doing on mm -hmm. Twitter. Uh, what is that What is that Twitter? And also, what is your Twitch information? Uh, on Twitter, which is probably the best thing to follow because a lot of people turn off notifications in Twitch. But, okay. Um, uh, Twitter, I am at the Duke online. Okay. Yes, the Duke was taken. So at sure. the Duke online. Okay. Um, on Twitch, I am uh, Twitch TV or yeah, Twitch TV slash the Duke. Okay. And then um, there's also one other social media sure. platform that I think people need to pay more attention to because it's built just for gamers, <laughs> and it's a Nook. And so that's a n o o k dot com slash the Duke. So, which if you just go to my Twitch page, okay, there's the, the panels link to all the things that you can follow me on. So, okay, yeah. okay, very cool, very cool. Well, once again, we we thank Duke for coming on tonight. Uh, always a pleasure speaking with him. Uh, has been the past two years getting to know him, and uh, yeah, it's definitely been a blast. Duke, thank you very much for coming on. Do appreciate it, and uh, we'll see all you folks next week for another episode of Smite Talk. Take care. Night-night.